JBL speaks, the world listens. Well, why do they do that, Al? Well, I'll tell you, because JBL are number one in the world of portable Bluetooth speakers. And of course, they have the biggest fanboy count. In fact, one of those fanboys who is a subscriber to my channel, Mr. Shoe Rice, he said, I mean, did you know the Mifart Wildbox uses the same drivers as used in the JBL Extreme 3? The tweet is, the woofers. You would think, well, that's a good thing because this is an extremely priced speaker. Today, when I checked, it was 249 quid in the UK, $285 in the USA, compared to about 100 pound, 130 dollars if you catch it on AliExpress or eBay, although eBay seems to be a bit more expensive, not on Amazon, is on Amazon. You'd think that was a good thing, using the same drivers, but he was trying to say copycat and kind of no-name Chinese speaker. Well, it's not a no-name. They've been around a long time, a Mifa. And they are both made in China. But yes, JBL are a bigger brand with a bigger logo. So here's the interesting thing. Using the same drivers, they must sound exactly the same. Well, not really, because don't forget these are active speakers. What do active speakers have these days? They have digital signal processing. So they will have embedded EQ. Of course, speakers this size anyway, never gonna get any bass without some EQ. Ah! So you've been asking for this comparison. You probably didn't even know, like me, that they are the same tweeters. However, I'm taking it on trust because he's a JBL fanboy. If he says they're using the same tweeters and the same woofers, then they must be the same drivers. Certainly, the measurements are the same. However, you will see, I call these 65 millimeter drivers. They call these 70 millimeter drivers for the woofers. There's no real standard how you measure these drivers. So they're measuring actual edge to edge 70 millimeters. But a lot of people, including myself, would measure the actual movable area, which is 65 millimeters, so it doesn't include the surround, the actual cone itself. So 65 millimeters, so they are the same drivers, but you may see different measurements depending on how they are measured. I say 65 millimeters, they say 70 millimeters. So big difference in price, and yet same drivers. It's gonna be interesting to hear how they compare to each other. They may be the same drivers, but we know you can get 100 watts out of the JBL Extreme 3, the JBL Extremely Priced 3. But of course, 100 watts if you plug the mains lead in. If you don't plug the mains lead in, what's the equivalent? Don't really know. Around 50 watts maybe, but it doesn't really matter. We're going to test out how it goes anyway. They say 60 watts is at uh, peak RMS or whatever. We don't really know. I don't take much notice. And this actually says RMS, which is pretty rare these days in the specs. And quite honestly, there is only one way to tell how they sound, especially compared to each other. That isn't in the specs. It's by listening to them. And here we listen at moderate volumes, about 50%.
Lab using the JBL Extreme 3, which now comes with a custom EQ. You've got not one band, not two bands, you've got three bands. You can tailor the sound within three bands. Mm, it's not quite like that, is it? I've done a video on the EQ, have a look at that. The long, the tall, the short is, you go plus one on the bass, you're not really losing anything on the mids and the highs. You're just going to hit that bass limit, which was about 80%. Now you're going to hit it about 70%. But if you go more than plus one, you're going to start losing mids and highs. And then you'll start pushing the mids and highs as well, which is really only making up for what you're losing. I see a lot of people, plus two, a bass, plus one, mids, or, whatever, or the highs. You're just making up for what you lose. But if you go plus one, it's kind of a free lunch. You're getting a bit more of a bass heavy sound, 70% below. And after that, well, you're just hitting the limit anyway. So there's no free lunch, but there is an app. You can tailor the sound. Well, I might as well use third party now. Yes, but if you use third party, remember, EQing any speaker, hi-fi, portable Bluetooth, whatever. System stable. What, you, you've got to watch the peaks. That's where you're going to get your distortion. That's where you're going to get your clipping because you can start pushing peaks where it's already hitting some sort of limit where you're going to start clipping. And you'll find a lot of these third party software EQs will reduce the, the headroom, reduce the volume, so there's some headroom, safe headroom, so you don't get those issues. That's why they do it. But you don't have that when you do embedded. So there's no embedded EQ. And I'm only using EQ when it's embedded because it's already made to go with that speaker. It's a safe EQ. Assuming all the limiters are working fine in the speaker. It's a safe EQ that you're not going to push it beyond its design limits. Look what we already know. You guys for years have been calling the so-called service mode on these JBL speakers. The low frequency mode, and, and that's the point. And then you start saying, oh, I use my low frequency mode, and now my speaker don't work. Because you've gone past the limiters. It's, those limiters are what's saving you from pushing the, the uh, speaker, probably the bass, too much past the distortion limits and wrecking your speaker. So, embedded EQ safer. We've just tested the low volume, and was it a shock to you? There isn't a million miles of difference in the sound. And hey ho, that could be because they're using the same drivers. However, uh, the big difference is, amazingly, the MIFA sounds a little bit diff uh, deeper. It sounds a bit clearer. It sounds a bit narrower. So it's not all win-win. It is a little bit narrower sounding uh, than the JBL Extreme 3. But it may be a shock that it's going deep. Overall bass is about the same. They are 50 hertz. The MIFA Wildbox is 2 dB up on the JBL Extreme 3 with its bass pushed to plus one. But if we're going to talk uh, good things, I would say the JBL Extreme 3, it does sound fuller, albeit it's a little bit more upper bass uh, oriented, focused, compared to the Mifor Wildbox. And the sound is a little bit bigger, although they're very similar in size, in terms of weight, with two kilos for the Extreme 3, and 1.6 uh, 1 kilos, so it is lighter, the Mifa Wildbox. I haven't got the strap on the JBX Stream 3, but I, I can't pick it up with one hand. You're going to need the strap to do that. But I can pick it up with two hands. It's an amazing, amazing shock. Uh, but you can like it or hate it. It just make it easier to pick up uh, the, the integrated, non-removable handle on the Mifa Wild Box. As you can see, it's got lights. We've got no lights on the JBX Stream 3. We have a card slot. Oh, uh, you guys like that. So you can put a micro SD card into the back of your Mifon Wild Box, you can play music straight off the speaker itself. You don't need any other device. You cannot do that with the JBL Extreme 3. And in terms of the sound, I'm kind of preferring the Mifon Wild Box. They are, they, there is a difference. It is a lean, clean sound on the Mifon Wild Box. It's a fuller, more meaty, uh, maybe more powerful sound on the JBL Extreme 3. I'm sure all your JBL Extreme three fanboys out there will still be loving the speaker because you like the sound. And hey ho, that's all that counts. You've just got to like the sound. I don't care whether it's a one note, one kilohertz uh, tone or lovely flat frequency response. If you like it, that's all that matters. But I, personally, I do prefer the leaner, albeit uh, cleaner, but leaner, thinner sound. Although I do personally like a warm sound. There is a clarity there at these volumes. Let's go. Up in volume, let's go to about 75%. Now, we're already at the limits for the bass, even though I've pushed it plus one. On the JBL Extreme 3, when matching the volumes, I'm at 80% for 75%.
for Wildbox pretty much owns the bass now. 300 hertz and down all the way into deep bass. It's the me for Wildbox all the way, except for that 60 hertz peak, which the Extreme 3 is tuned with. It dominates a little bit just in that little section there. Otherwise, it's completely owned by the Wildbox. So a little bit less bass and a little bit more of a high end for the Extreme 3 means there's a difference in the balance now of the overall sound. It's going to be more bass heavy on the wild box and a little bit brighter now for the extreme three you can see there's a little bit more of a peak there 13 kilohertz on the extreme three where the original track is actually just rolling off it's a signature of the jb extreme three that there's a kind of a thin 60 hertz peak where it's tuned to give you the most bass obviously in their testing that's most pleasing to most people and they're going to put all the rigs in that one basket and hey ho given the numbers of these speakers that sell and the price that it is they know what they're doing. Wow, congratulations! And I'm preferring the sound, although for me, it becomes a bit too thin. Um, it's just losing it's some sort of sparkle for me uh, at these volumes. However, in this comparison, I, I'm still preferring that low end thump of the Mi 4 Wild box. While it can sound to me a bit hollow at these volumes, this, the JBL Stream 3 now, is past its uh, bass limit and it's sounding a little bit compressed especially as it's still got its highs. Um, so the balance for me is not great. Again, I'd personally probably go as my preference with the Mi 4 Wildbox. But, you know, there's quite a difference uh, in the actual way these present the, the music. It's lean and clean. This is full-bodied and uh, 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 it's a bit of a powerful sound. But I would say, for me, that's the better listen of the two. So what happens when we go to maximum volume? I was born to be free. both speakers are on battery it goes louder again these louder volumes even though we've got plus one on the bass for the extreme three there is more bass on the mifa wild box everywhere even at the 60 hertz peak of the extreme three now the mifa wild box produces more bass i would say it shadows the original track a little better apart from its peaks and dips there around four kilohertz to eight kilohertz 
which is where the extreme three is a little bit brighter. So overall bass, three and a half decibels up is the me for wild box. You know, 50 hertz into the deep bass territory, it's four decibels up. While in terms of those highs, the extreme three is a little bit brighter. And that is the difference in the sound now. A little bit more in terms of brightness for the extreme three, along with less bass, makes it a little bit of a harder listen. So it was a surprise to me, the me for wild box on that test, remember on that particular track, Different tracks will suit speakers in a different way, depending on where the peaks are in the speaker and the in and the track itself. On that track, the Mifa Wild Box, a little bit louder than the JBL Extreme 3, a little bit louder, and it's got more bass. For a lot of people, it's all about the bass, and the bass is bigger everywhere. Mid bass, upper bass, deep bass, it's win-win for the Mifa Wild Box. And it's got less bass, but it's got still got more highs, so it skews the balance, it makes it a harder listen, the JBL Extreme 3. In terms of how pleasing it is to your ears, that's going to sound smoother because it hasn't got such the, the highs we've still got on the JBL Extreme 3. Now, of course, you're going to get a couple of decibels out of this extra if you, if you plug in the mains lead. Let's have a listen. Turn on. And the JBL fanboys out there is like, oh, I do love that sound. And of course, I've got to check it. it's gone to maximum volume. You won't get that on the Mifa Wild Box. What happens if I want to check that one then? It's a splash of water. And there, when I remember one said, this is fuller, it's more meteor, it's more powerful sound if you like. Doesn't that tie in with that? Bitum, bitum. It's, I'm delicate, I'm lean, I'm clean. Bitum, bitum. It's, I think it sums up the difference quite well between those two speakers. So, for me, Apart from the fact you're tied into eBay and AliExpress, but look at the difference in prices. It's less than half the price of the Extreme 3, with apparently the same drivers, if Mr. Shoe Rice has got his uh, facts correct. And in terms of measurements, they, they are measuring the same on, on the drivers, on both speakers. But, so, what, what are the other differences which may be decided to you? Well, of course, you get your lovely strap with the JBL Extreme 3, but you got your plastic, can't remove handle on the wild box. We got lovely, lovely lights that we can mess about with and if we really don't like it, we can just turn them off like that. And there's no lights on the JBL Extreme 3. In terms of the batteries, almost exactly the same. Spec at 36.3 watt hours on the Extreme 3, 37 watt hours on the Mi Form wild box. <laughs> We got used to it, we know. It's a, it's a shocker if it's anything other than SBC codec, but they are SBC codecs only. We've got Bluetooth 5.1 versus Bluetooth 5 on the wire box. They both will do stereo pairing SBC connections, but big difference here, it's a USB-C connection, but you will get a decent amount of power going into it. 20 volts uh, with the right lead, use the lead that comes in the box. 20 volts, three amps, You can so that's 60 watts, even though it's USB-C but let's up at five volts, three amps. So that's a big difference in terms of how long it will take to charge the speaker. Fantastic, uh, in the 2022, they both have an auxiliary input. They can both be used as a power bank. You can't use either of them to make phone calls. They both float when dropped in water. They are both IPX, not IPX, they are IP67. IPX, if the X would just be a placeholder. But IP67, the six means dust proof. The seven means you can drop it into up to one meter of water for 30 minutes. But if it don't float, I always say, what is the point anyway? But these will float. We've already talked about the drivers. Depending on how you measure those woofers, 65 millimeters, 70 millimeters, but they measure the same 20 millimeters on the tweeters with two passive radiators. Neither of them, in my testing, for me personally, is very device specific. Um, and indeed, the operating system on your phone or whatever you're using, 133 milliseconds versus 185 milliseconds, my kind of 0.80 milliseconds. So I would say neither of them are good for Bluetooth lip sync issues, streaming on your phone or whatever. And only the JB Upstream 3 has the app and indeed in the app you can update the firmware and indeed you can mess around with your not one not two but three band we call it EQ but actually it's a bit of an algorithm rather than a graphic equalizer that's the roundup that's the specs and those are the differences there's no doubt we're getting a good value speaker from the me for wild box why is it not on Amazon if they really wanted to uh, you know, push the boat out and uh, max their sails. I don't know. Is it because 
margins are, are huge on AliExpress. I don't know compared to you know what they have to pay Amazon when they sell on Amazon. Uh, it's hard to understand because most of these cheap Chinese, I'm not going to call them knockoffs, a lot of these good value Chinese speakers, they're on Amazon. All, all across the world on the various Amazons. But not the Mi Fun Wild Box, which is a shame because they've got a speaker that a lot of people are going to like. For me personally, I prefer the sound called Motion Boom. It doesn't go as deep as the Wild Box, but it's got a fuller sound. I prefer a fuller sound, a warmer sound, but you're a little bit more accurate in terms of if you're going to be, if you're going to play audiophile day to day, it's probably a bit more accurate on the Wild Box, but it does become quite lean as you push the volumes. So I would prefer that at the lower volumes, but I would prefer that at higher volumes if we're only going to use one EQ setting. But no doubt, it's a good value speaker. A lot of people who like a neutral sound are going to like the Mi for Wild Box. It's certainly more neutral than the JBL Extreme 3. But hey, look, look at that form factor. You've got a fabric cover. I don't mind knocking that. That's very plasticky. I wouldn't, I'd prefer to travel with that than that. I'd feel a lot, a lot safer because that's a more knockable speaker compared to the Wirebox. So if you've got to use it always on the move, maybe that's a reason to go with the JBL Extreme 3. I'm sure Mr. Shoe Rice, if he's still a subscriber, will come on the comments and tell us just why the JBL Extreme 3 is the better buy of the two, even though apparently, according to him, they're using the same drivers. So that was my comparison. You've asked for it, you got it. Hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you in another video. Thank you for watching. I ain't got that life, I ain't got that life Ain't no project wife, got my logic right cause I'm not your type I ain't got that life, I ain't got that life Sorry my I ain't get it right, I'ma just live my life I ain't about that, I ain't about that life uh.